Hi guys, welcome back. Now I thought to make a video of the components that I chose for my own computer, my own budget gaming PC build. And I thought I'd give a detailed explanation, let's just turn off the TV here, but I'd give a detailed explanation of uh, why I chose the parts that I'm going to list now. So uh, let's get started then. So the CPU, I chose the i3-2100 and uh, well the reason for that, I was initially going to get a uh, Pentium uh, G620 but uh, I got cold feet over that because uh, even though the Pentium is a good enough processor for gaming the reason why I went with the i3-2100 was for some specific reasons mainly first of all hyper-threading now the reason that I want hyper-threading is that I'll be using some programs that do utilize this technology which um, it's true that you have a dual core CPU but they're not fully utilized. So what hyperthreading does, in essence, is that you have two physical CPUs and two logical CPUs. The logical CPUs are not as powerful as the physical CPUs. They're like virtual CPUs. But they do come in handy in uh, certain programs like Sony Vegas, in the even Windows Movie Maker, um, Photoshop, these kind of things that I'll be using from time to time. And... Uh, well, I've heard that they're especially hyperthreading is especially helpful for background tasks like uh, virus scanning, for example. Or uh, I've even tried running uh, a game while rendering a movie in Movie Maker, and I got absolutely no slowdowns. So that's one reason I went for it was for the hyperthreading. Uh, second reason now <clears throat> was uh, the Pentium G620 has 2.6 gigahertz. Oops. 2.6 gigahertz, yeah, but the i3-2100 has uh, 3.1 gigahertz of speed. Considering that they are the same architecture, we're talking about almost the same CPU here. An extra 500 megahertz is quite a modest increase in speed with a faster, um, for example, programs that uh, take that are CPU intensive, let's see, like rendering movies should be a little bit faster and uh, shouldn't have any slowdowns. 3.1 gigahertz is uh, is solid and the reason also for that is at 3.1 gigahertz with a good processor like the i3 you shouldn't be um, you wouldn't be bottlenecking the uh, graphics card for example which means that the graphic the strength of the graphics card overall would depend on the CPU how you have too weak of a CPU You'd be holding back the graphics card and not allowing it to perform to its full potential. You will get uh, too powerful a CPU, an i5 or an i7. You will be uh, spending money and you wouldn't notice any difference because the uh, GPU is already being pushed to the max. It's, uh, it can't put out anymore. And the i3-2100 is a solid choice. You shouldn't have any bottlenecking with this uh, CPU for any, I'd say, any GPU in the market, except if you're going very, very high-end maybe a uh, 7870 or a 7970, a GTX 580, that sort of stuff, you, then you'd have to go for a higher processor. But uh, you'll see now, you'll see now the uh, GPU that I chose in a minute. Uh, another reason now is uh, RAM limitations. The Pentium G620 limits your RAM to uh, 1066 megahertz. If you get a, a fast RAM like 1333 or even 1600, you'll constantly be limited to 1066 with the Pentium G620. But with the i3, you can run mega, you can run the uh, RAM at its full speed. So I have a 1333, uh, 1333 megahertz of uh, Kingston, and uh, that's it. I wanted to run at its full speed. I'm not sure if there's much of a difference between 1066 and 1333, but I'm a little bit uncomfortable about not allowing the RAM to run at its full speed. I want to buy my equipment and I want it to run as fast as possible for the money that I got. So uh, there you have it. So i3-2100 with, uh, let's put down back again, hyper-threading, extra 500 megahertz, and uh, what was that again? Full RAM speed. And that was for how much? That was for 420 reals. Pretty nice. Quite uh, cheaper than uh, what's on Newegg. On Newegg it's $125. I'd know it's uh, maybe 120 now. 
and I got this for that's 420 divided by 3.75 is 112 dollars so that's good okay moving on to motherboard now I decided to go with a micro ATX motherboard since you really don't need a full ATX motherboard for gaming at all any motherboard should do the job fine as long as it's durable enough so I decided to go with a gigabyte B75M-D3V now think of your normal basic ordinary motherboard now what the B75M M8VX adds to an to a very basic motherboard is well here's actually a picture of it so if you see here first of all I have two DIMM slots for my RAM I don't need any more than this this is enough I currently have Slot A occupied with 4 gigabytes of Kingston memory, running at full speed, of course, because of my i3, and that's fine enough. I might upgrade later on to 8 gigabytes, but so far I found I have, didn't need to do so. I have one um, PCI Express lane at 16x, of course, for my graphics card, and I doubt, I highly doubt, I'll be running, I'll ever be using Crossfire or SLI, so the one slot is enough for me. Um, well, currently, my graphics card is covering up this uh, PCI X, PCI one slot here, so that's not much, not much of use to me. But I don't need it anyway. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. And uh, here's a nice feature. I'm from the um, upgrader market, as I would call myself. I have a legacy uh, sound card, which I decided to, which I decided that I still want to continue using. And this PCI, this ancient PCI slot, is what I wanted for my sound card since uh, I don't really like onboard audio after I've moved to the sound card. So, uh, <clears throat> what else? Yes. Uh, your standard motherboard now, basic, basic MATX board, doesn't offer, say, a 6 gigabit per second, whereas this does here. This white block beside the blue SATA connectors is, uh, one of them is, say, a 6 gigabit per second, because I do plan to add an SSD later on in the future. It's a nice uh, feature to have very fast read and write speeds. And with a few years down the road, SSDs should start decreasing in price and becoming something worth to buy. Uh, what else do I have? I have four uh, SATA, I think these are SATA 2. The difference between SATA 2 and SATA 3 is not much of a difference, really. It's, it's hardly even noticeable. Read and write speed maybe are slightly different, but they're not enough to... Uh, uh, a normal hard drive is not enough to fully saturate all that speed that is offered by SATA 3, so SATA 2 is just fine. Um, anything else that's offered here? Uh, let me take a look. <clears throat> okay, I think that's about it. Let's look now at the side. The side here, let's see. Yes, I did forget to mention, it's a nice point here. I have on this motherboard USB 3. On your standard, normal basic motherboard you don't usually get USB 3 and you can use this also as USB 2 it's US, it's uh, backwards compatible with USB 2 so that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 USB slots which is great for me a little bit more than enough but that's what I want and this here is uh, the LAN connector this is I think this is yes it is actually it's gigabit LAN this is gigabit Ethernet which is nice good and here are your audio connectors and I won't really be needing them except for this microphone here that I have plugged into and uh, because I'm using my sound card at the moment uh, you have uh, DVI, a VGA par even a parallel printer port I do have a, uh, a very old printer and I don't really plan to buy another one anytime soon so this is, comes in handy doesn't render my, other print my old printer unusable so that's good um, I don't really know who uses this anymore the uh, PS2 ports for your ancient keyboard and mouse, but they do seem to come in all motherboards, so no problem. Okay, I think that's it for the motherboard. So that's a Gigabyte B75MD-D3V MATX board, and uh, this came in at a nice price of uh, 270 reals. Right? Anything I missed there? I don't think I get it. But what, what's a good thing I should mention is that I think one of my friends mentioned it. Yes, one of my friends mentioned it to me. Is that this motherboard was an ultra ultra durable four, which he says means that it's quite a um, uh, unique motherboard in terms of how well I think durable it is and uh, the features that are offered. So I didn't know that, but that's 
quite nice knowing that I got this motherboard for a very nice low price. Alright, now moving on to the uh, GPU. I did state in my previous build that the Radeon 7750 now, uh, the HIS Radeon 7750, which was at a nice price of uh, 469 reals, was a nice way to go. But I did want to run my uh, games with uh, at 1920x1080 with uh, full anti-aliasing if I could. So I decided to step up to a uh, Sapphire, wait a minute, Sapphire uh, Radeon. Yes, 6850. And one gigabyte is enough. You don't need to go two gigabytes or higher unless you're running multiple monitor setups for gaming and so on. And of course, it's a GDDR5. You want to stay away from GDDR3. It's not, it's not a good option to choose. GDDR5 is the way to go for gaming. So Sapphire Radeon 6850, nice graphics card. And that was a bit expensive. But you have to do with the prices. That was 760 reals. Now, the reason why I see this as good was uh, the rest of the market consisted of Gigabyte 6850s, and all of these were minimum price was 850 reals, which I didn't like at all. 760, 90, 100 reals less. I was very happy with that. And I did get a free Dirt 3 coupon, which I'll be downloading from Steam at some time when I'm free. So, I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, just a few benchmarks. I'll be uploading benchmarking videos later on, but currently I'm running Crisis 2, and I'm able to run it uh, at 920 by 1080 at hardcore settings, which is supposed to be the highest graphical visual setting, and I'm getting around 40 to 50 frames per second, so I'm happy I hit it right in the spot. Between 30 and 60 frames per second is a nice way to go. Anything higher, you don't really need it. Anything lower than 30 frames per second, it's uh, you're starting to run into problems now. But that's I'm happy with that. Between 30 and 60, that's a great uh, range. Now RAM, four gigabytes. Uh, wait, I don't keep doing this. Four gigabytes Kingston RAM. King, yeah, Kingston RAM at 1333 MHz. Now I decided to go with one stick only and not so that's 4x1. Let's just add that in. 4x1 gigabytes. Is that how it's done? What I'm trying to say is I have one stick 4 gigabytes. Now I didn't go with two sticks of 2 gigabytes because I might want to upgrade later on to 8 gigabytes of RAM in the future. And this is 1333 MHz, so that's fine. You don't really need to go any higher than that. This was uh, quite cheap. Um, 83 reals, so I'm glad with that. Um, anything to mention? I don't think. That's it, yeah. That's about it. Hard drive, no, hard drive. Uh, I decided 500 gigabytes is enough for me because my old computer, uh, my old computer actually has an IDE. Uh, HDD, which is 160 gigabytes, and I never used up much of it at all. So if I see that 500 gigabytes is enough for me and for my games and everything else, and of course I decided to go with Western Digital Caviar Blue, which is a very popular choice these days, and it's 7200 RPM. You want to stick with 7200 RPM and nothing lower, because then. You might, find, you might find slowdowns in your desktop performance, and you definitely don't want that. I definitely don't want that after spending a decent amount of money on uh, a good PC. So, 7200 RPM, and came in at a nice price, considering that hard drives are expensive these days due to their shortage from the Thailand floods. So, ba -da -da -da, this was 270 reals. Okay, that's nice, seeing as everywhere else it was about... That nice at all, 340 reals. I was quite glad to be able to get it for only 270 reals, which is nice. Uh, DVD now. DVD burners are very cheap these days. It's mainly light on in the market, which is fine. I have, I've heard good reviews of it. It's uh, just your standard light on uh, DVD, CD, RW. And this came in at a very nice 65 reals, very cheap. Case now, case. I was looking at many cases. I really wanted to go with uh, 
a nice looking case, something that was imported from the United States, and nothing that none of this uh, generic cheap Chinese crap. And I have a difficult time finding one. Most of them starting price 300 reals. Though after a lot of searching, I did manage to find uh, a thermal take V3 Black Edition, which came in at a very nice price actually. And this is a great case and uh, great reviews on, on on it on Newegg. And I'm happy that I got this for close also to uh, US prices. In the US, it's I think it's fifty dollars. I got it here for fifty three dollars, which is. 200 reals, so I'm really glad, glad with that. Very nice price for a nice looking, exquisite case, I'd say. Probably a bit too basic for everyone else, but I really like this case. Okay, now, uh, power supply. I had quite a difficult time finding something that was good, 80 plus certified, um, meant for gaming and so on. Most of the, the market is filled with generic crap like Panda, and uh, uh, you can think of the rest just really 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 bad stuff with the terrible ratings so um, it took me a bit of time till I found something at first I was looking at gigabyte power supplies but I got cold feet over that the only one available was 720 watts which is just overkill and it had a didn't have enough uh, amps on the 12 volt wheeling I think it was about only it was 12 volts with 18 amps or so. That's a bad power supply, I'd say. 720 watts, 12 volts, 18. That's putting out about 400 watts, maybe. It's a really cheaper power supply, something you really don't want to go with. So in the end, I decided to go with... Oh, uh, by the way, they were what? They were about 340 reals. So stay away from that. In the end, I did, man did manage to find a nice power supply. Corsair is a reputable brand. They do good power, do make good power supplies. I went with the Corsair CX500. Very nice power supply. 80 plus certified. It's uh, non-modular. All the modular power supplies are very high, very high wattage, and it's not needed. So it's a non-modular power supply. Keep in mind, so you have a lot of cables. But if you know if you're good with cable management, you can deal with it no problem. So it's 80 plus certified. Um, yeah, 12 volts with uh, 34 amps on the railing, which is modest, nice. Should be able to handle the system just fine. And uh, a bit expensive, but what to do? You don't really have a great selection here in Saudi Arabia. I've been all over Jeddah. I haven't been able to find something decent. So this was 285 reals, which is okay. You have to deal with it. Um, total now, total, that works out to, let's take total now, total works out, tap, 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 calculator out please, that's 420 plus 270 plus 760 plus 83, plus 270 plus 65 plus 200 plus 285, that works out to 2,353 reals, which I believe is a bit over $600. Yes, $627. Keep in mind that you do also have the overpriced, uh, what's it called? Yes, Sapphire 68.50. If it was the normal US price, it should be well under $600. But that's alright. Close to $600 for a nice, decent gaming build with a very decent CPU in it. I think this is the best dual core that you can get on the market these days. Oh yeah, keep in mind also that most games these days don't utilize more than two cores. The only the only exception would be Battlefield 3, but even then, not really big of a deal. Runs it runs just fine with the i3. So uh, no need to go for a quad core. I myself uh, consider myself to be a bit of a power user. I do like to multitask, and this thing is handling it nice. I'll probably upload a video later on of doing a bit of multitasking and uh, the load which is on this CPU. So did I miss anything? No, oh, that's about it. Just the monitor left. The monitor now, as I said, I usually consider as a uh, separate purchase. 
I usually have the market flooded with um, Samsung LED monitors at uh, what 21.5 inches, but really expensive. I, they were what uh, 21.5 inch was 600 riyals, and the majority of them are. This was actually a 1080. This was a 1080p model. 21.5 inch, but 600 riyals is expensive for these. Uh, most of the market is just flooded with um, Samsung 18.5 inch at 1366 by 768, which is not really decent for gaming. You want you? It's nice to have 1080p. These were what 375 riyals. After a lot of searching, I did manage to find BenQ to be a nice solid choice. I was looking first of all at a BenQ 22 inch 1080p 1080p DVI input and so on. This was 480 riyals, which is very nice to get a 22 inch 1080p monitor for under 500 riyals is great considering where we're living here in Saudi Arabia with the overpriced parts well, I did inquire a bit on larger monitors, and I found out that you have the same BenQ, 24-inch, 1080p, DVI, and all that nice stuff, for only 600 reals. Now, keep in mind, this one is not an LED monitor, it's an LCD monitor, but there is almost no difference between LCD and LED, besides just power savings maybe a little bit a little bit more depth in the color but it's in my opinion and in many other people's opinions it's not really worth going for LED L LCD is just fine and uh, at a great price too you have the Asus LED 24 inch models but you can't find these under a thousand reals so getting this one here for 20, 24 inch for 600 reals is a bargain really in my opinion you should spring for it or they sell out. Right, I think that's it. Let's see the total for this build. And uh, the total for this build, let's see now. That one. Uh, calculator, please. 2,353 2, plus 600 reals, that's exactly 2,953. So there you have it. That's a really nice, uh, decent gaming build for under 3,000 riyals. I did set my budget. I did set my budget to uh, 3,000 riyals, and I'm very glad that I got this for under 3,000 riyals. And with very nice parts too. I3 2100, Sapphire Radeon 6850, and this gigabyte motherboard with USB 3. SATA 6 and so on, if you ask them, USB 3, SATA 6, gigabit per second, and all the fancy stuff, that's good. So I guess that sums it up. And just on a side note as well, keeping in mind that I didn't have a uh, my own PC before, and I was using family PC, and I had no means of entertainment, no Xbox or Sony or, or PS3 or something like that. And... Uh, Next box works out here to a thousand and fifty reals plus um, an okay laptop would be a thousand eight hundred. That's two thousand nine hundred fifty. But keep in mind, we don't even have a screen yet. So add the twenty-four inch uh, here. We have three thousand five hundred fifty, and that's just breaking the bank, isn't it? It's just better to have a nice, decent gaming PC. And keeping in mind also that. I play racing simulators like um, R Factor, um, Lift for Speed, and I'll be joining iRacing too as well soon. Online multiplayer racing. You don't have this. You don't have this stuff on PS3 and Xbox 360. I personally, I don't like uh, Gran Turismo 5 at all. I don't. I feel it's very arcadish, and Forza. I never really got to like it at all. I'm hooked to these games here: R Factor, Lift for Speed, and especially that there'll be sequels coming, like R Factor 
to GTR be a very graphics intensive game so you can see that the main purpose I got this gaming PC for was the racing simulators because I am just a big fan of simulated racing since I was maybe 10 yeah so there you have it great gaming PC for under 3000 VLs very nice so is that all? I think that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Oh well. Thank you for watching this video guys and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll stop talking now because I'm going hoarse and tired of talking. So I'll see you later. Bye.